Ever since putting out the video series on how I built this fiber laser cutting machine, uh, I've received an overwhelming number of questions about the project. Uh, far too many for me to answer individually, and a lot of them repeat questions, so I thought I'd take a minute here to make a video and see if I can answer some of those and uh, clear up some things. First, I've seen a lot of questions about uh, the difference between manual focus heads versus autofocus heads and just some uh, general confusion about um, how the z-axis works uh, in relation to the focusing. Um, so let me try to explain that a little bit. So on this diode laser, uh, it has a fixed focal length which happens to be about two millimeters below this case. So uh, to focus it, I would just raise or lower the head so those two millimeters off the workpiece and then the laser is in focus. Um, on this CO2 laser machine, it's the same idea. The focal length is about, I forget, probably about 10 millimeters below the bottom of the cutting head. So uh, same thing, you would adjust the table up and down to get the workpiece to the top of that height and then the lasers in focus. Now for the fiber laser, it's a little bit different. Um, there's not only the moving of the z-axis up and down to set a height, there's also uh, the focusing of uh, internal lenses inside the cutting head. So there's two pair of lenses and that focal length can be adjusted. On this manual focus head, you would just use a hex key and you can turn the dial left or right to set the focus position. So uh, on this autofocus head, it's the same principle, but uh, this box here contains a motor and you, could, you would control the focus position uh, via the software. So uh, let me explain uh, how this all comes into play when actually cutting. So I've pulled up a chart here that are the recommended cut settings for the Rekus 1000 watt laser source. I found this chart to be a pretty good starting point for any material. And let's say for example we want to cut out 2 millimeter stainless steel. So in the software you would set the speed to 6 meters a minute and full power since it's a 1000 watt laser source. You would use nitrogen as the assist gas at 12 bar pressure. You would use a two millimeter single nozzle and then you would see here you would set the focus on the laser head to negative one which on my manual focus head I would adjust the dial to negative one or if I was using an autofocus head I, in the software I'd set it to negative one and then you see I would set the height to be uh, 0.5 millimeters. So this is simple enough I would set the dial to be negative one and once I've set the uh, height in the software the the nozzle has a capacitive sensor, so even if the metal isn't completely flat, it will adjust up and down to keep it at 0.5 millimeters. Uh, so let me give you another example. So let's say, for example, we wanted to cut out 10 millimeter carbon steel, which is right at the limit of what this 1000 watt laser source is capable of cutting. We would set the speed to 0.8 meters a minute, full power, and this time we would use oxygen as the assist gas at 0.6 bar pressure. We would use a 2.5 millimeter double nozzle and we would set the focus to plus three millimeters this time and the height at 0.8 millimeters. Now here's the catch. This 1000 watt laser source isn't capable of cutting 10 millimeter carbon steel right off the get-go. At first it needs to do a piercing operation to punch a hole through the material first before it can begin the cut. So if I scroll down here a little further you'll see there's a reference for piercing 10 millimeter carbon steel. And this is a three-stage piercing operation where at each of the different stages there's going to be a different uh, nozzle height and a different focus position and a different uh, time. So this is where having an autofocus head really has its advantages. With my manual focus head I'd have to pause the program, take out my wrench, and adjust the focus at each of these stages uh, to do this cut. Where having an autofocus head uh, you would just set it up in the software and it would run it. So in summary, I would say if you're going to be cutting thin material, um, the manual focus head works fine. It's simple enough to use. If you're going to be cutting thicker material where you need, are going to need to be using a piercing operation, get yourself an autofocus head and save yourself a lot of headache. So where should I buy laser components? Uh, this has been a question that I've really had a hard time answering because uh, I, I didn't really feel I had a good answer. Um, I did a lot of research and I got a lot of quotes and then did a lot of shopping around uh, for this project. Uh, I ended up going with a company I found on AliExpress 
And uh, while their prices were the best I could find by far, um, there were some communication issues during the process that left me with this feeling where I didn't really feel comfortable recommending them if I didn't have to. Um, but uh, yeah, a year and a half later and uh, things have changed. I finally have a company I feel comfortable recommending. So you may have noticed I have a couple new laser heads and this mountain of components behind me. Um, I'm about to build another fiber laser cutting machine. And uh, during this process, I've had a number of companies reach out and want to sponsor the project. So let me introduce you to Skyfire Laser. I was originally going to use this uh, manual focus cutting head for the project. And uh, Skyfire Laser reached out and graciously sponsored this uh, Ray Tools BM110 autofocus head for the project, which I am absolutely thrilled about getting to use. So uh, thank you to Skyfire Laser. Um, but not only that, um, once I started uh, looking at their website and their offerings, um, I hadn't yet purchased all my laser components and um, their prices were so good that I ended up purchasing um, everything from them that I hadn't purchased yet. Uh, unfortunately, I had already purchased uh, a max 1000 watt laser source, um, but uh, I bought everything else from them that I could. Using this laser source as an example, if you search online, you'll find a wide range of prices. Uh, some companies are selling it for well over $3,000 for the same laser source. Uh, I ended up paying $25.50 for it. Uh, had I purchased it through Skyfire, uh, I could have saved over $300, so that's unfortunate, but uh, at least I know for next time. And that's been my experience across the board. I also needed to buy a water chiller for the project and a controller, and again, Skyfire ended up having the lowest prices that I could find. Also, a couple other things I think are worth mentioning is that um, the shipping costs were very reasonable and very fast, and unlike some other experiences I've had with communication, um, please forgive me if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but Xiao Dong helped me with my order. And I have to say, he's got fantastic communication skills. Uh, it made ordering everything uh, really simple. So here's the deal. As if their great prices and service wasn't enough, Skyfire is offering my viewers an additional 5% discount on laser component purchases, as well as a small commission on that uh, for me in support of my YouTube channel. So that's awesome news. Um, just use the discount code below. Um, so if you're in the market for some laser components, be sure to check out their website, alariusstore.com. And thanks again to Skyfire for supporting my channel and projects. Another really common question I see is, can I upgrade my current machine uh, to run a fiber laser? Uh, maybe it's a CNC router machine, or a plasma cutter and they want to take and put a fiber laser cutting head and source on it and use the existing controller to run it. Well this is another one that's really hard to answer because I've never done it so uh, instead of trying to come up with an answer let me just uh, share my uh, thoughts and opinions on the subject and share with you what I've seen and read uh, in, on online forums and such and hopefully that will help guide you to see if that's a good choice for you. So here's a little of what I've seen online. Exhibit A, Tamar Barr. Uh, I've seen a few videos on his YouTube channel and I believe he's built a DIY fiber laser cutter using a Centroid Acorn as the controller. So if that interests you, uh, check out his YouTube channel. Exhibit B, uh, the Linux CNC forum. I've seen at least a couple people on here who uh, are running their fiber laser cutter machines off Linux CNC. So check them out. And finally, Exhibit C, uh, on the Mazo forum, there's a gentleman that goes by the username Lilo. Um, I'm not sure if he's uh, completed it yet, but he there's a long thread here where he's trying to get the Mazo controller to run his fiber laser. And it seems like he was making good progress. I don't know if he's finished yet. So that's really exciting to see some people are making progress in this area. Um, I even considered it myself. Um, I have three other machines that I'm running the Mazo controller on and uh, I thought maybe I could try to use it for the fiber laser. But um, trying to run a fiber laser off a controller not designed for it um, comes with its own unique set of challenges. And personally, uh, I've had a hard time justifying uh, that extra complexity in the project.
Let me explain. The first hurdle is going to be height control. The fiber laser specific controllers are going to have an integrated functionality to use the laser head as a capacitive sensor to control the height, as I demonstrated earlier. If you use any of these other controllers, uh, from what I've seen, it seems that you might have to use a separate torch height controller, similar to what's used on a plasma cutter, or come up with your own solution for this. The second hurdle is going to be software. These fiber laser specific controllers are going to come paired with software designed specifically for fiber laser cutting. Uh, many will include features for multi-stage piercing, laser head focus control, gas pressure control, corner compensation, part nesting, etc. And from what I've seen, other laser cutting software such as Lightburn just isn't going to have all these features. Maybe you could write a custom post processor for Fusion 360 or SheetCam or something to generate the proper G-code, um, but I don't know. You know. Let me know in the comments if you have any good recommendations for this. And the third hurdle for me is simply the price. At this point, I just can't justify purchasing one of these other controllers plus a torch height control solution and figuring out software workarounds when I can simply buy an entry level fiber laser controller for cheaper. I've purchased this Raytools XC3000 controller for my upcoming project and I've already checked out the software that goes along with it and it looks to be even more feature rich than the Ruida software that I'm currently using on my other machine. So that's kind of my current take on the subject. Um, I can't really justify using one of these other controllers unless maybe there was some specific circumstance where you were trying to make like a multi-head machine or something and you needed its specific functionality. Um, but anyways, it's a topic that I'm really interested in still, so uh, maybe we'll do some more content on that in the future. While we're on the subject, as I've been recording this video, I've been emailing back and forth with Xiao Dong from Skyfire, and he was just explaining that obviously they sell laser components and complete laser machines, but a large part of their business is actually focused on laser services. They do a lot of fiber laser source repair and fiber laser retrofitting of CO2 machines and edge banding machines. And we were just starting the discussion on the feasibility of retrofitting CNC routers and plasma cutters into fiber laser machines. So that will be interesting. I'm looking forward to getting their expert opinion on the matter and I'll be sure to pass along what we find out. Okay, that's all I got for now. Hopefully if you're planning on building a fiber laser cutter, you found some useful bit of info in there. Um, I'm super excited. I think tomorrow my uh, final parts are supposed to arrive so I can start this other fiber laser cutter project. So stay tuned for the video series on that. Um, thanks again to Skyfire for supporting my work. And thanks to all my Patreon supporters for making all this content possible. Thank you guys.